bless the name of the Lord. We want to thank God for his grace and his love and his mercy. Surely want to thank God for the strength that he has given to our brother Clifford and Sister Jean. I've said to them that I cannot relate to uh, their experience of losing four family members at one time. Most of us here, we have lost either a mother, a father, a brother at some different point in time, or some close relative. But not at the same time, four people. And even though we will empathize with our brother, and even though we may express our condolences and our sympathy, we may never be able to understand their pain or their grief. But we serve a God who is able and a God who knows and a God who can comfort us in the deepest times of our difficulties and our troubles and our griefs. For he is a wonderful God. A friend who sticketh closer than a brother. A one who will hold our hands in the time of adversity. A one who will be there for us when we need him most. Our times are in the hands of the Lord. As Ham has said, teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. Uh, we don't know when our number will come. We don't know when the Lord will call on us. Uh, so this reason that we all need to be ready so that day would not take us by surprise. And while we are aware that the funeral service in Sierra Leone is long been completed and they're probably dawning onto, into a Thursday morning in Sierra Leone because of, of the time difference, we still want to make sure that we give God glory and thanks for what he has done. We've not had the opportunity to meet these four wonderful people. And if they had known the Lord Jesus Christ, Yes, we will have that opportunity on that great day to share with them the joys of being in the very presence of the Lord. I've wondered hard and long what should I say to the family, but more importantly, what should I say to all of us who are alive? Uh, this is a time that we can say all manner of stuff, but we need to take note that our Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. And that each of us need to take responsibility and prepare ourselves for that day. It must be for us a day of rejoicing and not a day of grief. It will only be a day of grief if you have not made your calling an election sure. It is for this reason I want to challenge us to taste and see that the Lord is good and to know that his mercy is endure forever. Amen. And to brother and sister Smith, you have the support of all of the members of Lighthouse, and I thank God that they have been calling you and calling your wife to encourage you. That's what we're all about at Lighthouse. That if one hurts, then all of us be hurting and feeling the pain. I think of something that God said to Moses. Moses had gone from Egypt to Midian, because of an incident that occurred that he got involved with. And 40 years after God appeared to Moses in Midian and spoke to Moses and said, Moses, I want you to return to Egypt because I've got some unfinished business for you to conduct in Egypt. When Moses left Egypt after he had killed the Egyptian who was in a conflict with one of his countrymen. And then another time when he came by and he saw two of his brothers fighting each other, he went to part them, as we would say, to separate them. And they remembered the incident between the Egyptian and the Hebrew. And they said to Moses, if you think that you're going to do to us what you did to the Egyptian, think again. 
When Moses heard those words, he was troubled because he felt that Pharaoh would have come after him because of killing the Egyptian. And so he fled to Midian. Forty years later, this man of God was conducting his own business. He had established a new life. He wanted to forget Egypt and forget all of the things behind him. But somehow God would not allow him to forget Egypt because there were some things going on in Egypt. And one day when Moses was going out to tend his father-in-law's sheep, he saw the bush on fire and he couldn't understand the reason for green bush on fire and the bush not being consumed or destroyed by the fire. And he decided that he would take a step closer to see what was going on. And when he got close enough, God said to Moses, 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 take off your shoe. The ground on which you stand is holy ground. And he wanted to know because there was no one else around there other than Moses and the sheep that was there. The Bible said that he heard the voice of God. And God said some very powerful things to Moses. He was intimidated by the, 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 the magnitude of the assignment. But yet God said that I am going to go with you. I'm going to be there for you. As well as I'll allow your brother Joshua to go with you. And one of the first things that God said to Moses. And there are four things that God said to Moses that I want to share with us. And in particular to share with Clifford and his dear wife and their family members who are here. God said to Moses, I have seen the affliction of my people. I have seen the affliction of my people in Egypt. One of the good things about our God is that he sees. He sees. Even when we think that God does not see, God sees. God sees. He's not like the gods with eyes but cannot see. He sees. And God knows your pain. He knows what you are going through. God is aware. God was fully aware that there was going to be a time of family reunion, a time of celebration, a time of joy, and a time of having all of your children in one place. 